If you struggle to animate quickly, it's probably the biggest thing holding you back from becoming a pro. The best animators in the world use workflows that accelerate the animation process, leading to more time creating and less time fighting with the software. In this video, I'll show you five of the best workflow hacks 99% of animators aren't even using, and you can easily use these techniques to instantly speed up your workflow, ultimately setting you on a path to become an animation pro. I'll walk you through all five steps, and at the end, I'll show you how you can download an easy to follow guide with even more tips completely free. But first, let me show you how it works. With complex animations, it could be hard to know where to start. And when you do eventually start, there's often so much to think about, it can be completely overwhelming. Using basic geometry to block out the main timing of the shot is a great way to start. And it means you can keep things simple. You can use boxes, spheres, or even sketch out some basic forms of your character. When you're happy with the timings, you can then go back in and use that as a guide when you're blocking out your main poses. You can also use grease pencil to quickly sketch out posing ideas before committing them to 3D. Now, animating repetitive actions can be a real time sink, especially when you have a lot of them. Walks, runs and idle animations can take up a lot of time, but with the right workflow they can be done in seconds. Pose libraries act as a bank of most commonly used poses, and you can utilise this by adding in key poses of a walk or idle or any other simple animation. If you've done it once, you can save those poses and the next time you need to animate it, you can drop in those pre-made poses and you're good to go. You first need to make sure you have the pose library add-on installed and it should be installed by default. To add a pose, first select the relevant controls and head over to the dope sheet and open up this menu on the right hand side by pressing N. Here you can create a pose asset or copy pose as a new asset. When you press either of these buttons, you should see your new pose in the asset browser. To add a nice little thumbnail in the asset browser, create a camera and try and capture the specific action you want the pose from. Make sure you're looking through the camera view before you create the pose in the pose library and Blender will automatically add the current view as a thumbnail. You can also rename the pose in the asset browser by pressing N and changing the name here. Once you've got these down as a base, you can then add offsets, head turns or anything to make your animation feel more alive. And when you do eventually get round to editing the curves in your animation, more often than not, you're met with this mess and fighting with it can cost you so much time. And one of the ways to combat this is by using keying set. Instead of pressing I and clicking location or rotation every single time you set a key, you can change the default keying set by pressing Control, Shift, Alt and I, and then whatever option you select will now be the default when pressing I. Now you can just set your keys without having to interact with awkward menus. Not only does this speed up the way you normally set keys, you can also make sure no unnecessary keys are being set. Now, using IK can be a real time saver, but animating clean arcs with it can be really difficult. The way around this in Blender is to make use of the transform pivot menu, which you can access up here or by pressing the period key on your keyboard. The option you want to select is active element, and from here you can select the IK control, shift select the control closest to the point you want to pivot around, and then click it again to deselect it. Now you can use the active element as the pivot point to move the IK control. One important thing to mention here is to make sure you're deselecting the second control before you start rotating. Otherwise, you'll rotate this control as well. Lastly, animating every little bit of even the most basic characters can be a real chore, which only really gets worse the more keys you set. So that's why using a layered approach is often the best way to animate any action. With body mechanic shots, starting with the center of gravity and nailing down the timing here first keeps things simple. From here, you can move up through the spine, adding polish to the legs and head, before moving on to the arms and lower legs. Once the main action is blocked out, you can move on to polish the extremities like the hair and fingers, going from this to this. With acting shots, you can start with the head and neck as the main drivers for the action, and then move on to facial expressions, then the arms, and then whatever comes secondary to the main action. Now you can download all of the tips I've mentioned here, plus a few of my most used keyboard shortcuts in a free PDF using the link down below. But everything I've told you here is completely useless if you don't understand the fundamentals of animation. So go check out this video here where I explain the best way to start learning animation in Blender.